Once school was over, I decided to take my chances with the little bit of intel I had managed to obtain from my classmates. If memory serves me right, Arya-senpai would be practicing at the dojo today. Of course, I knew her. She was a judo student just like myself, but for whatever reason, she has been refusing to compete in any tournament for a while now. Arya-senpai, are you around? I shouted her name as I parked my bike, looking around for any sign of the girl. Hwa! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Follow the shouts and you'll find her. I grinned briefly as I saw Arya seemingly in the middle of practicing a series of motions, almost as if she was fighting an imaginary opponent. Perhaps now was a perfect opportunity to surprise her a little. I snuck closer, making sure to make as little noise as possible before I reached a hand towards her shoulder. Arya feeling the hand on her shoulder, Arya reacted. She grabbed a hold of my hand, and with a loud grunt, shifted her weight, curling and tipping me over her shoulder. I didn't have much time to brace myself for the impact before I hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. Yeah! No one spe sneaks up on the great Kunoichi Arya! Oh, Taka boy! I didn't realize it was you. I'm sorry, are you okay? Kunoichi? More like Tasmanian Devil. That throw didn't have a shred of mercy in it. There's no mercy in the ring, Taka boy. Better you learn that now than in two weeks' time. Let me guess. You want to do some sparring, don't you? I actually came here to ask you something, but I guess a little sparring wouldn't hurt. Oh? What do you want to ask? You've got all afternoon, and I could do with a bit of a break anyway. Where to start? You used to take part in big and important matches in the past, right? Didn't you ever get nervous before going into the ring? Oh yeah! Ha! This one time, I got so nervous I hid in the kitchen cupboards until my dad found me and dragged me to the car. Of course, that was when I was, like, eight. Well, obviously, I can't go and hide from my match, but one of my friends made this stupid suggestion that I go and pray or something. Honestly, at this point, I'll do anything to calm my nerves a little. Taka boy, are you sure about this? You mean the match? Of course I am! I've been practicing judo ever since I was old enough to walk! This is my chance to finally represent this country in the sport I love. Mm. Arya seemed to think for quite a long time, all the while tapping her jaw with a finger. Eventually, she snapped her fingers and grabbed a tight hold of me. Alright, I'll tell you the way to the shrine I know, but it's gonna require more than a simple clap of your hands and a bob of your head. You're gonna need to give something to the shrine. Something of value. I guess I'll have to think of something before you get there. Thanks, Senpai. I appreciate the help. We? Oh, no, 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 Taka boy. I'm not going with you. I've got training to do. Besides, you've got to take care of this step yourself. I can draw you a map and show you an easy way to get back here, but you'll be on your own. You're not taking along? Not even for a little while. Afraid so, Taka boy. Let me just grab some paper. I'll draw that map for you. After Arya's return, quick preparations were made and I followed the directions noted down on the map. Surprisingly, it wasn't all that far. However, the hint on how to find my way back, in case I got lost, was a bit sketchy. Just look down, and you'll be able to see the roof of the dojo from anywhere on the hill. The forest near the dojo was my first challenge to overcome. A narrow path coiled along the trees, and nearby was the river Ichikawa's sister had mentioned. I followed Arya's scribbles with a bit of skepticism, but after an hour or so, I finally arrived at the supposedly legendary shrine. The shrine itself seemed surprisingly well maintained, despite being in the middle of nowhere. It made me wonder if someone could be secretly living in there. Perhaps some secret martial arts master. The thought of a hermit living and hiding within the shrine in order to prepare himself for an upcoming battle between good and evil started to dwell in my mind. I guess it's too good to be true. I sighed in annoyance at the fact that, aside from the shrine itself, the grounds surrounding it seemed completely abandoned. There was no way anyone could be living in there. For the time being, I decided to focus on the reason behind my visit. It only took a few moments before I gathered the courage to approach the building. Once inside, I found a rather fancy-looking altar of shorts at the back of the room. I guess this is the thing everyone's talking about. Silently, I folded up the map I had been given. Putting it inside my bag, I approached the altar. I was kind of skeptical about the whole religious aspect, so I wasn't too sure if it was actually going to work. I don't even think luck will do me much good in a match like this. In my opinion, there wasn't room for things such like luck in martial arts. 
Judo is all about using the knowledge you have gained through training. Of course, a good amount of talent also helps. There was simply no room for something as superstitious as luck. Clearly this was going to be a match where my expertise and talent would be pushed to their limits. Nothing more, and nothing less. How curious. The boy doesn't believe in superstition, and yet he stands there, surrounded by the very thing he denounces. Upon hearing the voice, I looked around, trying to find the source, but there was no one to be seen. Wh who's there? Quite the cliched question, but the right thing to ask is, where am I? What are you talking about? Show yourself! Not yet. Entertain me for a little while longer, would you? This, pla this is a place like no other. Why did you come here if you do not believe in such things as luck? I came here to prepare myself. Oh, do enlighten me as to what this something might be that you are preparing yourself for. I felt a little bit annoyed as the questions continued, though maybe if I kept talking to Nora, I would find, I'd be able to find out where the shell was hiding. I'm prepared for, I'm preparing for a tournament, a judo match. Judo? What might that be? Seriously, you don't know what judo is? It's a highly skilled combat art. Aha! So, you're a warrior. Hesitant to go into battle and come here in hopes of finding the resolve to fight. I'm not sure about the warrior part. How fortunate. It just so happens that there's a need for one of your kind. My kind? A hero. This shine brings fortunes to heroes such as yourself. However, every great hero must sacrifice something in return. Sounds like what the others mentioned. Your version sounds better, though. Laughing briefly at the story, I decided to play along and clap my hands together in prayer. So what's next? Do I offer up my allowance or something? Don't be silly. Money is of little importance to a hero. For you, the sacrifice will be something of much greater value. I'll be looking forward to seeing what destiny has in store for you. As if on cue, I began to feel nauseated at the moment the girl's words reached my ears, my head spinning wildly. Slowly, I staggered backwards, collapsing onto my back. As my vision grew blurry, the sound of approaching footsteps could be heard. Good luck, hero. You're gonna need it. Despite my attempts to get back up, all I managed was a brief look at the girl. The sight of horns and a tail left many questions, but before I had a chance to utter even a single word, my consciousness succumbed to darkness.